Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, he has a catchy slogan, new economics, but Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell has thus far failed to offer much by way of policies to fit the description. It's particularly interesting then that he chose tonight to attend the Westminster launch of a report proposing the abolition of means-tested benefits in favour of a flat rate payment for everyone the so-called universal basic income. It is, he said earlier, an idea that Labour will be looking at closely over the next few years. And joining me now to discuss the idea is Andy Stern, whose book, Arguing a Basic Income Will Be Needed in an Age of Automation, is gaining great attention both in the US and beyond, and John Rentoul, the chief political commentator at The Independent. Um, Andy, we'll begin with you. Explain why now is the time for the universal income in a way that has never been previously true. Well, I, I think if you believe a lot of reputable research by Oxford University, McKinsey, Deloitte, Boston Consulting, the World Economic Forum, the most recent Nobel laureate that said a storm of disruption to the job market is on the way because of accelerating technology, we'd be really foolish as a world to not prepare for that storm. And I think universal basic income is the simplest and most direct way to both end poverty and prepare for the disruptions in the job market. So, so because people won't be paid to do a job, the solution is to pay them to not do a job. Well, I think what we're talking about is setting a floor for people. We're not saying people won't work. We aren't saying people won't earn income. But we're saying that the ability to earn a full-time job like I was able to do in my lifetime and my father is going to become much more difficult. You know, technology is not just affecting blue-collar workers, it's lawyers, accountants, areas in finance. And so I think we need to understand we're going to potentially arrive at a time where there's not enough work for people who want to do that, where we want to have economic stability and choice in our economy. We don't want to have all these mean-tested programs. We want to give people a floor uh, so they have some security. John Rentoul, it's, it's, it's an attractive proposition, at least at well, first glance. No, it's a, it's a lovely idea. I mean, you know, Im imagine there's no heaven. Um, <laughs> you know, I think, uh, it, you know, everybody who's ever looked at it has thought, well, wouldn't it be nice if? But, I mean, the problem is you've, you can't actually make it work. I mean, it involves, uh, it, it involves spending so much money on people who wouldn't uh, otherwise need it. Uh, that you'd have to put tax rates up uh, to, you know, I mean, one, one model I've seen, you know, offers a basic income of, of 8,000 a year, but it involves putting up the basic rate of tax from 20p in the pound to 48p in the pound. And I just don't think that's politically possible. And that, doesn't, and that scheme doesn't even deal with housing benefit and council tax credit. I mean, I, you know, it, it's just too complicated. It, it, it's going to cost too much, it's going to be too complicated and almost impossible to implement, Andy, but you're, you're still selling a lot of books. Well, I would say it's actually very simple. We have something called, in our country, called Social Security. It's really a universal basic income, and, and certainly it's paid for by contributions from individuals as well. But in my book, I do the math. It's about $1.7 trillion. The current welfare system is about $800 billion. Our country doesn't have a value-added tax. We don't have your Tobin tax. You know, there are lots of things that we could do in this country, and a lot of the, the money that's paid to wealthier people will just be clawed back by the tax system. I think we first have to decide, is this a good idea? And I think it's a really good one. And then, yes, we've got to think about how to pay for it. But this is the only idea in the United States where Charles Murray, uh, a conservative, and Andy Stern both agree on the concept, where Martin Luther King and Milton Friedman agreed on the concept, where three Nobel laureates agree on the concept. I think we should do the math. I think it can work. Why do you think Swiss voters rejected it yesterday? I, I think it's premature in Switzerland. I, I think what's interesting is the poll that was done around it said that 70% of Swiss voters say that in the next 25 years they think it's inevitable. But I think Switzerland's a country that's very successful, doesn't have much poverty, technology's not really affected it, but I think they did an enormous contribution. They've sparked a global debate, which now, as you said, is in the UK with Justin Trudeau becoming to the United States, Namibia, the UN. Everybody's beginning to talk about maybe there is a better way to end poverty and provide benefits 
that we can deal with the upcoming change and disruption in the job market. That, that's it's the crucial sensible. point, John Rental, is, is the upcoming change. You know they've even got robots that can do journalism now. We're all going to be out of work soon, and, and the idea that we'll either starve or have to well, find something new. I'm surely. afraid, but no, but that's, that is as old an idea as the, as the basic income, actually. The idea that automation, that new technology is just going to put everyone out of work, is going to change the nature of work. Uh, these things, you, you know, let's let's wait and see what what actually happens to that. I mean, the problem with the basic income but just look is that truck. we can't make it work You're going to have driverless now. trucks pretty soon. That's a huge yeah. part of the American workforce. Yes, and you, and you have self-service checkouts in, in in supermarkets, and 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 the British economy has continued to create jobs at at an unprecedented rate. You know, the the job market is going to change. It is not going to it's, it's it's not going to mean that people don't have have any work to do. I mean that's that's the old utopian idea, literally utopian idea of uh, of, of Thomas More. He proposed a basic income, and he proposed that people wouldn't uh, wouldn't have to do more than a couple of hours work each day. You can't see any mileage in it at all. No, I th well I think it's a lovely idea, but you know Andy says do the maths. Anyone who has actually done the maths finds that it doesn't work. So so let's concentrate on, on, on making the welfare system we've got work better rather than some utopian scheme which involves tearing it all up and starting again. John Rentoul, Andy Stern, many thanks indeed to you both.